thank you for the task force to inviting us here today. So, um, as Nick has said, my name is Kirsty, and I head up an organisation called Academy Ambassadors. Um, we've been uh, initiated within the Department for Education. We were born, and then we recently moved to a charity called the New Schools Network. Um, what we do is we very specifically target senior leaders and we introduce them to multi-academy trusts as potential board members. So trustees, non-executive directors, board members, whatever phrase you use, it's at that level that we are pitching to try and get the employer engagement increased. Um, we've got over 240 that we've recruited to schools uh, and trusts from two schools that are forming a very new trust right up to trusts of almost 70 schools. And it's that sort of change and that sort of dynamic that I want to talk a little bit about today. So I've got two questions for us um, here, which is about what does the growth of the multi-academy trust mean for employers? I look at this always through a lens of governance. I'm always looking at boards and what's happening in boards. But there's quite interesting messages coming out for those of you that are involved with wider employer engagement. So I want to sort of look at that, and also why does this business engagement really matter at the strategic level right here and right now? Um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is completely anecdotal, and I'll make no apologies at a research conference for being rather anecdotal, <laughs> because uh, in my job I get to go and meet multi-academy trusts, and I kind of peel it apart and see into the heart of the organisation because you're looking right into the board, what's happening at the board, and that gives you fantastic insight to the world of the multi-academy trust. So it's just too exciting not to share, so I'll share some of that anecdotal stuff. But also, as Nick mentioned, we're just at the end of some research that we've done with an organisation called Populous. So you'll see a couple of slides that I bring up. I've got a little Populous um, uh, logo up there. That's the methodology we will circulate slides afterwards, I won't go through it. We will publish this in full in the autumn, um, but as I was at a research conference, I thought if I've got some new research coming in, I can't help but share some little fragments of that. So, just want to give you a little bit of background first of all. Um, academies, as you know, have grown exponentially, changing the landscape of education. The numbers that you see there illustrate the sheer numbers of academies. What's important, I think, though, particularly for employer engagement, is what is happening within those academies, and that's the growth of the multi-academy trust chain. And that's really what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I've got some really interesting statistics that always um, amaze me. Um, in August 2012, three quarters of academies and free schools were going it alone. So they were single schools. In three years, that completely reversed, and there were two thirds of all academies were in a trust with other schools. So you have this coming together of these um, schools into organisations and increasingly now I think we've got at least a fifth of academy trusts incorporate six or more schools and as many people that haven't yet realised if you're not involved with the academy's world you have got the growth of organisations of 30 or 40 <coughs> schools together and even one up to almost 70 schools. So quite substantial organisations and for all of you the aims are around creating culture change in education, creating culture change in employers. Now, when you have the chance to get involved with a large trust, you're talking hundreds and thousands of pupils. If you can get involved with that organisation, you can influence that culture. So, really big opportunity. Um, another just by, bit by way of introduction, for anyone that has, isn't sort of familiar with the structure of a multi-academy trust, the bit that I'm talking about that I'm really interested in is what happens at the board level that sits across a number of schools. So you will have each school, above them they'll have sometimes called a local governing body, sometimes called a subcommittee, sometimes called a, an academy council. It's, it's a, a board that sits on top of a school. And then there's a multi-academy trust board of directors that sits right across that. So um, this bit with the red circle is where I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and I think the first thing I wanted to talk about for, for the, my experience of finding people from business and getting them involved in academy trusts was the motivations. Um, when, this is a little bit from Populous, when I commissioned them to go and talk to people that were on boards and had come from business, they came back and they said, it's really interesting, Kirsty. It's really, it's strange. I wasn't expecting this. And I said, okay, what have you found? And they said, well, we've just been doing some research with teachers, young graduates, going on to the Teach First programme. And they're driven, as we all might expect, 
by this tremendous sense of social justice, this tremendous sense of philanthropy and vocation. And the researchers said, that's exactly what we found. Now, we, at this time, you know, they're talking to people who have been chief executives of FTSE 100s. They're talking to an ex-chairman of a very large retail organisation. They're talking to very senior leaders. And they were slightly surprised to find that strong motivation there. And, of course, I think I wasn't, and probably most of you, if you've been involved with this, you, you haven't been. But sometimes business is quizzed to say, why are they getting involved in education? Nearly always, I won't go through these quotes, but behind these people getting involved in education is a strong story of what's happened to them. You know, maybe they've had a great education, maybe they haven't had a great education, but that's one of the things that they bring. And I think that's a really important lesson learned for what might drive engagement. Um, the second thing I think that they um, bring is, uh, that might be slightly different, is a desire to get involved in really tough challenges. I know sometimes I've read research about employer engagement and they've said, you know, make the first step not too difficult. And I think that's absolutely right. You want a wide door to let as many people come in as possible. But we've found some interesting people who've said, I am not getting up in the morning. I'm not buzzy. I'm not excited by an easy challenge. I, you know, sit on a board, tick the boxes, get involved. These people really want that sense of change, that sense of dynamism, that sense of impact. So... It's been a fascinating um, little bit of us learning about what will engage people. And it's not always a sort of easy message. Sometimes what they want to hear is, I really want to be involved in turnaround. I want to be in involved in the most difficult schools. And that's obviously absolutely critical today. So my next slide, which probably won't come across terribly well, but is a scan from the um, white paper, Education Excellence Everywhere, and you don't need to sort of read any of the um, uh, keys on it. Roughly, the blue patches, and there are a number of these types of maps in that white paper, are showing you where there is um, underperformance and lack of capacity to improve schools. Now, one of the barriers that I face in getting employer engagement is going to be very familiar to, to lots of you, and that's supply and demand. Where we need these people involved, where the toughest you know, most challenging schools are that really require, you know, the, the people from the, the highest performing people from business, they're sometimes in different areas. So we share that barrier um, with you. The second one that I thought was striking that we share with many other areas of employer engagement is jargon, education jargon, building a wall around a school and not letting people in. So we face that challenge in governance just the same as in any other aspect of employer engagement. Um, and it's that sort of um, sense of a secret garden of education that's long existed that can be quite off-putting. However, I think what's happening with the growth of the multi-academy trust is that by their nature, they are changing organisations. So the best chief executives of multi-academy trusts, very often, you know, they will be ex-head teachers, but they are people who have recognised that what they knew when running a small primary school is not what's going to work when running a chain of six schools. They've probably had that bump, and I'll show you a little chart in a second that shows that. So the door starts to open, and they look outside, and they say, well, I can't know it all. There's just no way I can know this all. Nothing in my teaching career has told me how to deal with a human resources structure that sits across 20 schools. So they have to look outside. So there's a certain sort of... Um, opening of the door that is happening in the multi-academy trust in terms of the autonomy they have and the scale but also culture and ethos you know a good multi-academy trust will define itself very strongly by culture and ethos and, and we've heard about Pimlico and we've heard about the trusts and we see trusts like Harris that have that real entrepreneurial culture and anybody here who's from employers side or is involved in that liaison can really help those trusts as they seek to form the culture and ethos of the organisation that they want to make themselves distinctive. So all of that means that employers are getting on board and some of these are just some of the employers that we've managed to get in and you know, they're seeing this as a fantastic opportunity for their senior leaders to come and get involved and they will very often have a scale, a spectrum of engagement from <coughs> reading with children right up to sitting and being the chairman of the board of a multi-academy trust of 30 schools. 
And that's the bit that was missing before, and that's the bit that we seek to fill. Um, I'm going to go very briefly through my next slides, because otherwise I know that Nick's going to um, cough just like that to tell me I should be wrapping up. Um, I will share them afterwards, but I just wanted to illustrate this little graph. Um, what it shows, the white line is showing the changes that happen as an organisation grows. It comes from business, it's a generic change curve. Life's not too difficult when you're small. It gets extremely difficult, big steep white line when you start to grow and then things get a little bit easier once you get to critical mass. So I think the other thing um, I think I've learned and my, our organisation has learned, employer engagement feels different in different stages at the board level. And that's really exciting because the people who are entrepreneurs, who've done young people who've done a tech startup, they love getting involved when an organisation is one to three schools because they're dealing with a startup entrepreneur. The person that was the head teacher and is now the chief executive is in effect a startup entrepreneur. So that brings a whole load of different energy into employer engagement. However, once they get to perhaps you know, 30 or 40 schools, we're really talking about people who can work at scale. And that brings in all sorts of people from retail organisations, from franchising, from hotels, anybody who's worked at scale and can understand what that looks and feels like. So it does drive different opportunities at different times. And if you're working with multi-academy trusts, you need to know where they are. You need to know what size they are and how far they're going to grow in order to know what the ethos is. Um, I've got just, I think, uh, two more slides. Um, and this one, again, I'm not going to go through in detail. But very, very interesting. The type of work these people do when they land on boards is diversifying. The backgrounds they come from, very different. I've talked a little bit about, you know, from the tech entrepreneur to somebody who's done very large retail, but also property, um, engineering. We've had people who've come from legal and financial, the sort of classic areas people come from in governance, but also marketing, because again, these organisations are forming an ethos and people from business can help them in that. So critically important that they um, get involved in governance and that they lend their skills in this myriad of ways that they can on a board. But the last thought I want to leave you with is that from all of these uh, business leaders that I've talked to, I go wrap, sort of all the way right back to, to sort of full circle at the beginning when I talked about what was driving and motivating these people to take board roles on multi-academy trusts, and that was this sense of vocation. So all of these people who come in at the board level, they have a critical governance role, but they also, you know, the eyes light up when they talk about culture and ethos. So nearly to a man and a woman, and particularly I'm thinking of a woman who was the Britain's first uh, chief executive of a trucking company, she got a board role on a trust and she had, a, you know, she had work to do, it was at the startup stage, getting the governance in place, helping them get an HR structure, helping the board run effectively, she was the chair. But the other thing that she did was she brought in a whole programme to ensure that young people when they were leaving were life ready, work ready because that was just in her bones. There was no way she was going to be involved in an organisation and then sort of, you know, say, I'm going to look at the financials, tick through the data on the governing body, and then, you know, that's it. No, she was involved at board level across a number of schools, and she also looked at the culture and ethos. So my rationale and why all, you know, I will say all aspects of employer engagement are critical in schools, but if we miss the bit at the top of the multi-academy trust and the governance level, we miss this huge opportunity to open a door and change an ethos that then lets in many other organisations. So, last thing from me today, as I always lend every single speech that I have ever done since I came into this job, is uh, just ask for hands up of who is involved in a governance role in education. Fantastic. So that's not bad. So my aim is... We'll have the conversation today. Hopefully you'll ask lots of questions. If we're all here next year, will you please come and tap me on the shoulder and I expect at least 40 or 50 of you because there is nothing more important. If you believe in employer engagement, that's where you should be. Thank you.